What's cranking wieners? We are back at it again with yet another epi. Still on the famous, world famous, Alan Henry Lake. Yesterday wasn't so world famous, it was pretty dust. We really tried and committed most of the day searching for big bass. We ran into a dude who uh, I think is local to the area, his name is Wes, if you're watching this Wes, uh, to your dog. He gave us a lot of really great intel and we kind of fed off of that intel, tried to find some fish up shallow that were spawning, but couldn't find much. We saw fish, but they just weren't really acting right. This time of year, you have to get the right fish. You can't just like say, oh, you know, the water's warm, the moon is full and they're just gonna be batting. That's not always the case. Perfect example, yesterday it was 89 degrees. We had the full moon, which theoretically sounds great on paper, but there was nothing. Even Wes, who fishes out here a lot and has caught many DDs, said, uh, yeah, it just wasn't it. So, seeing it wasn't it yesterday, we figured we'd come back out today and uh, try to catch some bass. Maybe a little bit of reverse psychology will come into our favor today, and these fish will bite when the conditions don't seem as great. So we're gonna spend the first half of the day fishing, searching for beds, big bass on beds. The goal is double digit, you know, the goal is anything over 10 pounds. If it's 10 pounds, 1001 doesn't really matter. I just want a down, an absolute unicorn. So if that doesn't work and this wind picks up, we are going to try to catch some Allen Henry spots, which generally feed regardless of what the conditions are. And uh, we are gonna probably bring some home to eat. These guys are littered throughout here. Uh, the Creole Limit's five, we're just gonna take home a few just to taste it out and try it. I've heard they're very good, but uh, stick with it, stay tuned, and let's go crank some fish. <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. as you may have guessed it, we failed to catch some fish on the sight scene. We saw one big one, right, Alex? We did. Yes. Okay. 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 I see you. Pretty sure you just came out of there. Holy f That's a giant. It just wasn't locked. We just decided to cut our losses and chase after one of my favorite fish, that being the spotted bass. I've heard they're very good to eat, and again, it's, it hurts my soul to keep a bass, but I'm very curious, and I wanna share with you guys my thoughts and opinions on how they taste. I have, I have had smallmouth before. So I think these guys will taste very similar to smallmouth. They're cold water fish, they like to hang deep, and they are muscular, they're very, very powerful fish. One thing I like to do when I'm looking for spots, again, I'm no spot masters, I like to look for uh, any sort of steep bank with trees, these fish are gonna be suspended on the trees right now, eating uh, shad and stuff. The largemouth, I don't know, they're being whack. I've got no idea where they're at, but the spots you can pretty much guarantee on being on a steep bank. So here we have a main lake cut bank right here where it goes basically from 10 to 20 and that, that 10 foot area right there is a good spot for, for trees to, to basically be and it's a shallow to deep spot that those fish can post up in. So we're gonna throw three baits to these guys and see which one works best. Start off with a scout, saucy swimmer, the 3.3, which is the smaller one. And then we might even try a five inch lunker log. Let's go get some dinner. All right, first cast, going in for the spots. There's some brush in the water. Oh my God, that thing was huge. Oh my God, that was a humongous spot. Holy moly. Okay, I think we're in the right spot. No pun intended. It's, oh, there's one, little guy. Oh, that was so simple. They're such easy fish to catch. Like, I, I know that sounds ridiculous, but they are. Like, look at the way they're eating this right now. Like, everything else is dormant in the lake, seemingly, but the spots are just crushing. Like, what is, what is this dude on? Anyway, yeah, they're just easy and fun fish to catch. There's so many of them here in Allen Henry. I don't know how they got here. These, some of them are, I think, regular spotted bass. The others are just Alabama spots, which is so strange. Uh, again, I don't get the whole stocking process of that, but there's quite an abundance of them in here. This one, I believe, is in Alabama. I could be wrong. Okay, first one of the day. A little too small to keep, but we'll take them. See ya. <laughs> That's fun. There's like three things I'm looking for right now when I'm trying to find these spots. Uh, one of them is big rocks, big boulders like this that are in the water. The other thing is standing timber. I can't see a lot right now on my graph, but I do see some like sticking out of the water coming up. So that's good. The fish will suspend on that. Just kind of chill, hang out, wait for bait to come through. And then the last thing I'm looking for is just like the steep drop off bank. You can tell it's steep here, just judging from what you see out of the water. And then of course beneath, it's deep as hell. We're, the back of the boat's in 28 and then the front is probably in, you know, 15 to 20. So it, it's a good spot for these fish to hang out. I feel like they really do chill in these spots year round, especially right now with this weather being so weird, it's a safe area for them to be. There's another one. Oh wow, God, so much fun. A little bit better. 
Might even find some largemouth today doing this too. I don't know. This weather's so weird where there could be uh, largemouth and spots just suspended. See, this guy looks a little bit different. I think this one just might be a regular spot. See how he doesn't have such a strong lateral line? I think he might just be an OG spotted bass. Again, a little too small for the frying pan, but I mean, a bite is a bite. We're figuring them out. That's two bites on this bank that I haven't fished yet. Good stuff. There's one. That one's okay. Little spot. Yeah, this one's a little bit lighter than the last one too. Definitely one of those ordinary ones. I don't know. Again, I have no idea which ones are Alabama, which ones are regular, or maybe they're just all the same. I've got no clue. I don't know. All I know is they love to eat. They love to eat the jerk bait. Sweet. There's one. A lap, that's it. How big is this? This guy decent? Oh no. He's got me in a tree. They love to do that. They really love to get you in trees. He's still on there. Get out of the tree. They are so good at getting you in a tree with the jerk bait. Son of a gun. Well, this is particular. Uh, oh, he just came out. Nice. Oh, that's not bad. That's, a good one. that's pretty good. We should eat him. Yeah, well, I think we should eat this one. Especially since he was so wily enough to get me in the tree. I don't know if there's a size limit on Alan Henry for these, so I'm just gonna go with the regular Texas size limit, that being 12 inches. Wow, this guy's feisty. Um, he is 12. I would call that, I would call that just over a foot, yeah. It may seem a little weird to keep one this tiny, but I prefer the smaller fish, a little bit younger, fresher meat. These guys are a little bit more muscular and, and a little more lean, so we're gonna put this guy in the box. He is over the limit. We can keep a few more of these guys and we'll have a nice dinner. Oh my goodness. That's something nice. I hope. I hope this is something nice. No, he's just hooked funny. That'll keep though. That's an eater. Ha <laughs> <laughs> More spots. More spots on the boat. Golly, they hit this thing with some authority. These guys don't mess around. These guys don't mess around. Eh, nope, we're eating you. <laughs> just a hair over 12. We're going to keep it. <laughs> Join your buddy. Oh, well, there's one, there's usually more. It's so weird to catch just like one in a single spot. They like to run small schools. Oh, there's one. Wow, that was weird. <sighs> okay, just like that. Oh, he just came off. That was a little better one. Well, that wasn't wrong. Like I said, they like to run in packs. <laughs> Second cast after my last one. There's another one. That's three bites in a row. This one feels really small. Oh, he ain't bad. I'll take him. <laughs> They're just crushing. They get way bigger in this lake. We've caught some good ones this trip, you know, messing around with the jerk bait, but with the fishing being tough right now, I'll take any bite I can get. Just saw this island on the way to my next spot and I was like, nah, let's try it. Sure enough, three casts, three bites. Not too shabby. Bye bye, Bob. All right, see what else we can do here. See if there's see if there's more than three. I bet there is. But there's a whole load of them. Oh my God, there's another one right under him. Another one right under him. I think I hooked them both. I think I just hooked them both. I, I've got two, I've got two. I've got two on right now. I've got two spots on right now. Oh my God, I just hooked two of them. Ready? Oh, <laughs> that was insane. That's insane, dude. <laughs> oh my God. This is what I was talking about. These fish are so aggressive. I've never done that with bass before. The only time I ever caught two fish at once was with uh, peacocks. They're so aggressive, dude. I think this is the Alabama, and I think this is the regular spot. Don't quote me on that, but this is just kind of my hypothesis. You can see how they're uh, two very different colored fish. Oh my God, that was so sick. This actually happened yesterday, but I wasn't able to land both. This guy was, I think it was the big one that was chasing the little one with the jerk bait, and I just kind of let it hang down there for a bit, and then I felt another doink, and I was like, okay, I think they both have it. That was so much fun though. <laughs> Unreal. This guy's definitely gonna keep. We're gonna put him back. Ooh, this one's definitely the biggest one of the day. Not saying much. They're all tiny, but there you go. Yeah, that one's definitely gonna go 12. Nice fish. Oh, you don't like me. I don't like you either. 
They're gonna taste so good, you little rascal. Oh gosh, felt. Join your friends. Whew. <laughs> that was hectic. Let's go get some more. Yes, I knew it. I knew it. That's a good one. It's gotta be a good one. Please tell me it's not like just side hook. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Oh, that's a good fish. Not bad. Barely hooked in the head. Ah! <laughs> yeah, no, no giant, but definitely the biggest one. <laughs> Look at that spot, dude. They are, they are just thriving for the scout. Anything that you throw at these guys that's aggressive, that resembles some sort of minnow or shad pattern, is going to get the thwack. That's another keeper. <laughs> in you go. They pull so hard. It makes it, makes it you just have like an enormous fish. Something crazy, especially with the sun coming in. There we go. There we go. He's staying down. It's because he's hooked weird. Oh, that's going to be our fifth keeper. This is a lot, a lot better fish. We were fishing this spot yesterday after we couldn't catch any largemouth, and we just, we had so many bass. Like, we had so many spots come up and just crush. I think the lake record, or the state record Texas spotted bass came out of this lake. So there are some giants in here, but, you know, you boy catching the dinks. That's okay, because the dinks are tasty. You gonna taste good, little guy. <laughs> there we go. We made it back to the homestead. Alan Henry gave us the business, but we gave the business back. We didn't get any extra large double cheeked up large mouth, but I actually kept the little spots alive because I wanted them to stay fresh. At least theoretically, I think they're alive. Let's go check them out. Oh yeah, doing great. A little banged up, but hey, that's all right as long as they're fresh. Wait, hang on, what's this? Huh. One of the spots spit up a worm in the live well. You don't see that every day. Let's go flay these guys up. Which one do you wanna do first? They all look delicious. And just like that, we've got some fillets. Okay, Chef Boy RB, we're in, we're in my kitchen. I don't know if you guys ever really see my kitchen. I need to start doing more cooking sessions in here. Usually we do it in the back of the, the Lexus or the whatever you want to call it. Fillets, got them. Uh, a lot of meat on these dudes. They're full of muscle. Uh, and it looks delicious, man. That is like some good white meat. You know, I'm not exactly the best at flaying, but I think it turned out pretty good. It's just like flaying a perch for you northern guys. And I guess for you southern guys, it's similar to flaying a crappie. They're just, they're more bulky. They're like built like torpedoes. Anyway, this is just how I cook it. I'm not saying this is right. I'm not saying this is how you should do it, but this is how we're gonna cook it today. I like fish spicy. I don't like fried fish. I like it grilled. So we're gonna just really quickly rinse off these fillets. If you can hear me, probably can't. Put them on a paper towel. Okay, flays are bloodless, scaleless, and ready for some, okay, wait, there's actually one scale, I stand corrected. Now they're scaleless after they've been um, drenched in water. Like I said, it's pretty gross to eat like soggy fillets. Uh, the, the ideal thing would be to like let them soak in milk. But since the grocery stores are literally out of everything, including milk, like flour, and eggs, we're just gonna roll with the punches here. Shout out to COVID-19. Anyway, I'm gonna put some Cosmos wing dust in here, this is buffalo. There's like two ways I like fish, one of which is black and the other way is just grilled. So, <coughs> that's got a kick. <coughs> okay, quick tip, don't put your nose right to the bag of wing dust, otherwise you're, you'll just have a burning sensation in your nostrils. You're gonna mix it up, just like you toss a salad. Just like, you know what I mean. God, get your head out of the gutter, Alex. Woo, okay. Here's the cooking station. It's nothing fancy. I prefer gas burners, but I'm a broke bitch, so we're rocking with the electric. Uh, back in Maine, I've got a, a gas burner. I love that. I love either doing grill over fire or gas, but this will do, and it's gonna work perfectly fine. Got a nice little medium-sized pan here. We've got it preheating on like a, just, just a hair above medium heat, like in between heat. Uh, then I've got my butter at the ready, some Irish butter. This is the good stuff. And then once this heats up, I'm gonna put uh, a nice little layer of some goodness, some golden goodness on there so our filet's gonna stick. 
you don't want the flays to stick. Fish can stick very easily. So you wanna make sure you got the pan properly lubricated with some of the best. I think it's good. Gonna put a little bit of butter on the pan. Just gonna spread it, just gonna spread it. Don't wanna discriminate any side of the pan here. We want evenly distributed amounts of booter. Time to lay the fillets that look how good that looks. Oh my goodness. Never cooked spotted bass before, as you guys probably know. But like, the one thing I'm noticing right now is this fish is very flaky. And generally speaking with flaky fish, comes like an immense amount of flavor and tenderness. I'm excited. When I first kept these fish, I was like, they could taste bad, they could taste great, but just based off of what I'm looking at right now, this is gonna be good. Aside from the seasoning, like, this is just gonna be like a good fish. That's what you wanna look for too, that flaking. That means it's cooking correctly. Oh yeah, look at that, it's just flaking right off. I'm ready. That's it. I'm gonna load up the plate. This is like, hands down, the flakiest fish I've ever cooked. Like, I can't even keep it together. Wow. This is gonna be so good, dude. Like, I'm just gonna load it on there. Oh, that hot, steamy pile of spotted bass. Delicious nuts. I feel like Andrew Flair rocking right now. I'm not much of a cook. You guys probably know that, but. All right, second play is going on. Instantly shrinking. Called a bit of an audible here. Alex inspired me. We were cooking up the fish and it was flaking so much to the point where he was thinking to himself, he's like, yo, this would be really good on top of a chip. So, we're switching up the recipe. Since this fish is flaking, we're gonna put some chips down on a pan, throw some cheese on there, throw in the oven, then it's gonna melt, it's gonna get all good, and then we, boom, last minute, slide in with the little bits of spotted bass. So we've got kind of like a, uh, Oh, what would you call it? like, like a, a tower of fish and chips? Fish and chips, it's technically fish and chips. This is gonna be good, nice idea. The fish is complete and looking quite succulent, might I say. Uh, before we combine these two dynamic duos to make some nuclear taste buds explode, I'm gonna try the fish just alone before we add it with the chips and just see how it, how it, how it goes. Um, it looks ridiculous. I mean, it looks so insane. If this tastes like poop, then I don't know what's what's wrong, but here we go. Ready? That is like, okay, I'm gonna get crucified for saying this. Everyone in Minnesota is about to jump in the comments. This is highly comparable to perch and walleye. Highly. Like, talking texture-wise. And taste, it's my, like, the buffalo obviously is super overwhelming. It's a little spicy. But that just is good. Like, look at that. When your fish looks like that, you just know it's gonna taste good. If it looks good, it tastes good. That's the general rule of thumb with fish. That's why I like ahi tuna is so damn good because it looks epic. It looks like steak. Cameraman, Alex the editor has got to have a little taste himself. What do you think of this? What do you make of this? Dude, this is awesome. Yeah, that's what Super I think Super flaky. Well. Yeah. Oh my God. Just the texture, I think, is what makes it. Like, I'm tripping over just how it, like, it just feels in the mouth. The thing is, and I think the science behind this is the fact that we caught these fish deep today. These fish were suspended in, like, 20 feet of water, 30 feet of water. That water's cold. It's only, like, 61 degrees. So I think that helps the flavor of the fish. If it was hot, if it was summertime, we were catching these fish out. They might taste a little different, but I think it was the scenario in which we caught them. And also, they stayed alive until we got to the house, too, so... That was also key. Now let's go put it on the nachos and see how that goes. Ah, she's ready. This is gonna be super simple. What do you think, guy? Looks pretty solid. Looks pretty tasty. Woo! Bone apple teat. Delicious, man. Hey. Since we can't use the C word on YouTube, might as well just cheers to some Adalas. Here you go, buddy. Thank cheers you. Cheers to you to a good session at Alan Henry. We may not have caught some big bass, but we had some good times, great laughs, and most importantly, the best eats. Good one. That's got the cheese, the fish, and the sauce. Cheers. Cheers, folks. Going in.
the fish is already good, but then you add some cheese and chips, a little bit of sauce. It's an explosion, bro. It's nuclear up in my taste buds right now. Holy moly. Oh my God. It's nice because it's like the, the, the fish is hot, but like the cheese and the chip cools it down a little bit. Kind of balances that. And then, but yeah, when you take a little sip of some Adol, kind of wash it down. Oh, I love this, dude. I freaking love this. We got off the water at like six, had a four hour drive. And then right now it's 11 p.m. And we're having a late night spot of bass snack and it's like the best, like this is the best one ever. All I want to do is go to bed, but I knew filming this catch and cook for you guys would be fun. And it's actually paying off because now I'm not going to go to bed hungry. Mmm. Lush. That is so good. You guys have to try this. Ooh. Here goes Alex Yetter going in for a mother load. <laughs> that was a lot. Oh my God. Yeah. Not too shabby. This is actually really good. It is. It is. <laughs> oh my God. It's always a crapshoot when we film these. But you're right. You're right. Just just this whole setup right here. The fish is great. Yeah. But when, but you, when you combine it, it it's this just lights out. It you is. could sell this at a restaurant. John. I know. If any of you guys are watching this right now and have a restaurant, put this on the menu. Put this on the menu. Just give us credit. That's all we want. We'll put this on the menu and you won't be shocked as to how many people will probably order this. It is good. And I suck at cooking. So I imagine if someone did this right. It'd be like, I don't know, it'd be like orgasmic, for real. Anyway, we're peace and not signing off. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys wanna see more catch and cooks, more elaborate videos like this, let me know in the comment section below. But I appreciate the view. I hope you guys are staying safe, staying well. And as always, folks, keep eating fish and chips. <laughs> Never stop.